enjoying the game and enjoying themselves tonight. Uh, here we are in game on Yunsu LE in the top right hand corner. Coming from Extraterrestrials Academy, the purple Zerg players, Selium. In the bottom left hand corner, Renegades of Hell sends out their blue Terran player, Fiend. A uh, pretty interesting game. Uh, GNX Command falling to a good Swarm Host play last game. Uh, making a few crucial uh, mistakes, trying to snipe out Hatchery, but ended up losing his army. That essentially cost him the third base and cost him the game, and just spiraled out of control. First game was a ZVT or ZVTS just like this, where we saw Sheep do a quick roach build and uh, PVP in our two in game number two. Yes, and we just saw Stalkers overwhelm. Uh, XTA. Uh, this is game number four. And, yeah, <laughs> a little bit of balance arguing in the chat. Uh, that requires a hard switch. Someone's saying uh, Archons and High Templar are the best option. High t which it's not entirely wrong. You don't really want to use Archons against uh, Locusts, but you do get a good jolly off of storming them because they should die in one good storm, a whole chunk of them, but you really do want Colossus out in the field. Colossus being that 9 range versus 2 range, it's just too great, and with 17 times 2, it takes only uh, 2 shots to 1 hit a Locust. So. I can't understand. I can understand why someone want to go uh, high templar against Locust, but uh, Archons just by themselves, they need something to uh, kill off the Locust besides high templar because storms are just a little bit too unreliable. Locust spawn really quickly, and it's better just to have like a mix. You do want Archons in your army for that inevitable muta switch, because once you have like uh, five, six Colossus out on the field. There are is a heavy chance of either Mutas or Corruptors coming out, and it it does good to have uh, to have something that can kill b batched up units like that. Uh, nothing really wonky coming out from our players. We did have a pool before hatch, and uh, CC after barracks coming out from Fiend. No Reaper play. Looks like he's going for really early bio push. We might see a stim timing here off of two base. No gas taken just yet, so we will not see Reapers. We will not see mech. We are just going to see a whole lot of Marines really early. Uh, with the spawning pool up, Queens are almost out. Production for Selium should kick in pretty quickly. Uh, this Overlord, a really bad loss for Selium early on. He did not see any tech. Losing that Overlord is going to hurt. Uh, a couple Zerglings are out. He, they are going to be really, really annoying. And uh, with four Marines out, they will get driven off. Uh, didn't even manage to kill a worker, but he did confirm the early command center. So a heavy amount of Zerglings could be coming out, but looks like Selium's going to play the macro game. We are going to see... Wow, that was a lot of drones that just morphed at the same time. We are going to see if a third base is going to be taken. Looks like that's what this guy, little guy is doing. Fiend actually checking for the third base. He's going to miss this drone, and he actually does. So he will not know the third base timing. A little bit unfortunate for Fiend. Uh, the SUV does get found out. So it, while it scouts around being a little meatball, there will be a few Marines pushing to the watchtower just to try and take it. Oh... Fiend, back at Fiend, barracks are up and running. We are going to see a bit of a timing push. This should be a tech lab. We will see Stim coming out of that. As soon as it's done, we may see Marauders being produced from this barracks and just Marines from everything else. Surprise, there's no reactor. And oh, another Overlord gets lost from Selium. It supply locked him only for a second, but that's a little bit bad. But Selium made sure he had the supply for it, which is a lot better than earlier. Earlier, it's just hard to have that kind of money uh, spare while you're trying to macro up, trying to build an army, trying to drone up, trying to do everything all at the same time. Uh, Selium getting his uh, 
gas from his natural and his main. Actually has three gas taken. Needs to catch up because he did get that early third, which I feel is kind of what you need, especially against an early command center like Fiend did. I mean, it's economy versus economy. Uh, yeah. We are seeing a stem marine timing push. No marauders. This is going to be a classic TVZ. We are going to see marines and uh, widow mines, classic Pult style. Pult annoying, never ending marines. Uh, we should see Baneling, Zerglings, and. Ooh, these Zerglings are going to catch these marines out of position. That's really, really good. Uh, less marines, the better, especially at this point. Fiend, though, is getting reactors on everything, so we are going to see a lot of marines coming out. There should be double engineering bay coming along the wall line any second now. It looks like a starport was the priority, which I don't blame them. Those medevacs just heal so much. Double evolution uh, chamber coming out from Cillium. We might, we should see a spire come out as soon as the lair starts. Do not see a lair just yet. We do see a macro hatch at the third. No fourth base being taken. No reason to at all. Uh, units out on the field. There are eight. Only eight Zerglings to 14 Marines, but uh, Fiend is not pushing right now. It looks like he just wants to build his wall, get his supply up, get some medevacs out on the field, and start some Marine drops until Widow Mine production starts going crazy. Oh, but for now, Stem is finishing up. We should see Fiend push out at some point, but he isn't. Stem is just finishing right now. We might see it after Combat Shields, because Combat Shields did just start right after uh, Stem was done. Support Crawlers coming out, preparing for the inevitable drop play from this style. Uh, no, two macro hatcheries are coming up for Selim. He's looking to just pr outproduce Fiend as much as possible, and with uh, four barracks on reactors, three barracks on reactors, I'm sorry, uh, it's, it's going to be a little hard. Another barracks is coming down. No third base from Fiend. That might hurt him a little bit. Speed is the failing nest has only just started. And these Marines, they do have stim. They're going to rush in here, and well, they both, they all get surrounded. They're in a really good spot. These Marines are going to be healed by the Medivacs. Queen's not focusing Medivacs very well. They're focusing one right now. Sport Crawler focusing the other, but these Marines, ooh, they all get cleaned up. That's a horrible, horrible loss for Fiend. He could have just picked up and boosted off, saving the Marines, saving it as much as possible. But he did get a fair amount of workers. 12 drones did fall overall. And Combat Shields is just finishing up. Oh, I wonder if that would have went any different if Combat Shields was finished. That extra 10 hit points, a good 2 hits more for these Zerglings to take out Marines. Might have done a lot. And, well, these Marines are going to do their best to uh, try and kill off a bunch of these Zerglings, which they will with Stim. But that's a lot of damage these Metafacts have to heal. They might be out of energy. 1-1 one -one is just fill finishing up for Selim. He's going to let... Fiend push, and Fiend's just getting 1-1 now. Selim's going to be in an upgrade advantage for a while, and with these Banelings, and Baneling speed is on the way, uh, Fiend might be in a really bad spot. There is no third base, which is the signature spot of how you know this is working. Once you have that third base, you start producing Marines ridiculous amounts at a time. And, well, hey, Selim's all on top of it. Fiend needs this third base. He needs some Widow Mines, and Widow Mines are starting to be come out right now, but it's going to be really, really difficult uh, for Fiend to be able to hold all of this, especially when if he lets Centrifugal Hooks finish. And that's only about 25 seconds off. Fiend's going back, and that's not good. He needs to be able to snipe off as many Banelings as possible, but once they start rolling... Oh... Banelings get pegged off pretty well. Good control from Fiend. A little overstimming, and right before Banelings speed is just finished. It's just finished now. They're starting to roll, and there are not a lot of Banelings. There's only six Banelings out on the field, which, ha, ah, this Zergling is doing his best to try and snipe these guys. Oh, and oh, the huge hits from what Banelings were out there, killing a large amount of units. This is why you need those Widow Mines out there, because Banelings are a pain. Siam is starting his 2-2 way before 1-1 one, one is finished for Fiend. That's going to be a little interesting. Aspire is coming up. We are going to see uh, Muta play along with this, which anticipated. But Fiend's still not on the third base. I really wonder what's going through Fiend's mind. 
Uh, third base is building, but it is building in the safety of its main. It won't be available immediately to start mining off of, which, I mean, there's no real reason to. Uh, build it in his main. He could have just cleared off one spot, started walling off one of the entrances, maybe just destroy this rock tower, control this spot in this spot, be a okay, and just make that never-ending swarm of marines and widow mines coming at you. But with a lot of those marines dying, Fiend is really a little far back in supply. He should be maxed out because marines are dirt cheap and they build fairly quickly. And Celium's just taking this game with a command in uh, a little bit of noticeable lead. Uh, there are bailings stationed at... Ooh, there's actually units at every spot just in case a drop happens. Uh, Fiend is taking the watchtower with two marines and he finally has his third base landed and mining from good job did not transform it in his main probably a smart move for him uh, but with this third base up that just means that Fiend is going at full power now he will have a near limitless supply of marines and widow mines coming out all at the same time and it looks like Fiend is doing what I said earlier he's gonna drop these rocks he's gonna try and defend from the back entrance and this main entrance right here into the natural but I don't know, Selium is just having free reign, he could probably drop two more bases if he really wanted to, but he looks like he might be going in for the kill, and I'm not sure if Burrow Tech is done. Oh, these Marines getting a good angle at these Zerglings, and, well, the Burrow Tech for Little Mines is not finished just yet, but a few Zerglings did get picked off, there are a lot of Marines, you gotta remember, they do have one of the highest DPSs in the game. Uh, fourth base is being taken by Selium, taking the very secure one that he had to destroy the rocks for. Not exactly efficient, but hey, if you think it can help you in any way, shape, or form, it was probably better using your circlings to kill rocks instead of sit there and twiddle their wings. Uh, losing Fiend actually managing to catch Selium's, uh, a few Selium circlings out of control. Didn't manage to stem only a portion of his units, unfortunately fully, uh, Actually, he did fully stem. That's going to hurt uh, Medivac energy. You're not fighting Terran. You can let Medivac's energy build up as much as you want. Uh, sensor Tower at the third. Very smart. He's going to be able to see any mutas trying to come in. But no missile turrets just yet. You'd expect muta play... Oh, that's a little wonky there. He didn't lower the supply depots and losing income like that. Mutas are out. They are checking around. Uh, if they're not careful, they're going to wander or uh, flock right into these marines and just <laughs> flocking die everywhere and we don't need flocking <laughs> I need to just to do that uh, drilling claws is finishing up these widow mines are in a burrow and under a starcraft second and well bailings are coming and these mutas got caught off oh the burrow just finished oh so many widow mine hits good control from Selium, but the bailings are out on the way the bailings drew in everything they can to catch up with these marines but oh a few of them are getting through Marines in the back are cleaning up Mutalisk. Everything is just going crazy. We need to zoom out, and I should have done this earlier. But it looks like the Marines are holding these endless supply of Marines, and a couple of mines did survive. Actually, it looks like just one, one, and a few more just joining the fray. And there are nine Marines coming out at a time. I think Fiend can hold a little bit more. He's starting to gather resources, putting in a little bit. Might not have had production going constantly. He may have maxed out. That's why he pushed. 3-3 is on the way, but there is no 3-3 from Selium. So I am not having a hive just yet. This is the curse of being needing the gas for mutas. He doesn't have the gas to make a lair, although he could right now if he really wanted to, but he just wants more mutalisk and more and more and more. He is throwing down an infestation pit right now because he knows he needs 3-3. Three, three. Uh, mutalisk are out. They do have plus one attack, which is a little curious. I'd like to get armor, but I think they have attack just to do that extra little damage. And while they have that extra little damage, uh, this game is pretty slow right now. I will be two seconds. Sorry about that. My cat decided it would be funny to open my door. Uh, let's see here. Fiend took a, his fourth base. So Fiend's looking to play a little bit more of macro game. We might see a transition into mech since... There is not a lot of gas being used for Fiend right now. He has his 3-3, he only needs the gas for Widow Mines and Medivacs, and Widow Mines only take about 25, I believe, uh, gas. It's either 25 or 75, and I'm pretty sure it's 25. Please, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Widow Mines in the back, guarding this. 
One, one lone Zergling survives that explosion. Uh, that is the luckiest Zergling of them all. Ooh, but a swarm from Selium. He's actually stopped at fourth base. Oh, and now his whole army is trapped. There's a lot of Banelings. Banelings getting a good hit on Marines, but there are Widow Mines everywhere. These Banelings are clashing into Marines. Uh, Zergling swarming on the bottom half of the Marines, but more reinforcements are coming in. They should be able to hold off these Zerg. And with no more Banelings left, only one, it looks like, Selium will take his victory on that fourth base and leave. Uh, Fiend's gonna need to repair that as fast as possible. He might have to drop a mule. And now look at that, he's got a little Starbot happy face. How cute. Like, that is one happy star watching those SCVs repair that. I don't think he'd get any happier than that. Oh, back on the Zerg side, creep. Really, really good creep spread from Selium here. All the way to the third base already. It's starting to creep up in. Very, very nice. Uh, Selium having a very heavy Zerg composition. 3 3 is finishing, though, for our Terran player. And the Hive is only half done. It still has another 50 seconds, and Pathogen Lands is coming out. I like uh, an Investor transition because the Marines are all balled up. And if you manage to get a couple good Investor shots, they should be able to kill Marines pretty easily. And Banelings, you know, get to have a good go at them. Uh, these Zerglings are actually getting past the Widow Mines. Two Widow Mines, apparently not enough to kill that many Zerglings. Probably use one to detonate prematurely. And this Zergling, this poor Zergling, is like, hey man, come on, I want to get away with SCVs. And he's just attacking the Missile Turret. The uh, Missile Turret might go down. I mean, there's SCVs there. We're going to keep an eye on this. And, oh, there it goes. So, that attack, kind of worth it. Uh, 23 SCVs are now lost, but 400 Zerglings have died from Selium, and Fiend right now is in the supply lead, and that's never really good as a Zerg player. Uh, Selium is taking his fifth base, but only just now. Fourth base has been mining for a while, but no queen on it. Infestors are out on the field, and we are seeing that Ultralisk transition. Ultralisk do pretty well against Widow Mines. It takes about six shots to kill an Ultralisk. Uh, Marines don't really do too much damage, especially after you get the tech upgrade kite in his plating. Uh, Fiend making his fourth a planetary forge is very smart. There are a lot of Zerglings out, and it's very good against Zerglings. And well, it's like Fiend's gonna start streaming in. He's starting to make a little bit of Marauders to help uh, supplement the damage from, or tank the damage from uh, the Banelings. Looks like Fiend's gonna do a little bit of a slow push. He's gonna start clearing out creep. Another little bit of a run by, and SEV's actually trying to fight here. The Zerglings having kind of an alright time, but with auto repair on, they should, should not have uh, ooh, much going. But there are those fungals, and well, with those fungals come great bailing hits. Uh, one SEV is completely loaded, and pretty much everything fell. Uh, there's no more Widow Mines ready to fire. There's only a handful of units, but there's just nothing left from Cell. Selium, I mean, he does have units coming out. Seven Ultralisk are almost done and ready to go. Uh, Adrenal Lands and Adrenal Level 3 Armor. This one Ultralisk is going to have the best time ever while Fiend tries to kite around and kill this hatchery, which he might get it. He's in the sweet spot. It's so low, and it goes down. That's really hard for Selium. He needed that economy. As you can see by his money, he is fairly low at this stage of the game, and oh, the fifth base is under attack. The fifth base hasn't even been mining the whole time. Fiend's taking a very commanding lead. Selium's not trading very well. Let's take a look at Fiend's loss. Fiend's loss showing the tail of the game. 7,000 mineral advantage for Fiend. Selium is a little bit far back, but with these Altered Lists on the field and with these investors out on the field, we might see something happen. And there's a lot of creep. The creep's even taking over the Thunderdog eSports sign. Oh no! The Fester slime trail all over it. Oh, we're gonna need to clean that up later. But we're gonna have a Fester counterattack here. Or Fester counterattack. Uh, counterattack from Ultralisk here. They still only have 2 2. Now, Adrenal Glance is done for the Zerglings, so they're gonna attack a little bit faster. These Ultralisks, they do have 500 hit points, and it's ridiculous. Oh, the great fungals on the army allowing the Ultralisks just to tear through everything. Fiends and might be in a really bad spot right now. There are only one fungal left, it looks like. Energy, yeah, well, there's still two or three. And the little lines are going off, but Fiend with his 3-3 is just making sure that, uh, oh, one Ultralisk just couldn't survive, even though there were queens there. Selium missed Markowing a little bit, and it looks like he's just going to do his best to try and, uh, use these queens, but these queens are eventually going to die. 
and he's gonna try and scamper away, but this Widowmine might be able to pick one off. And readjusting, Pete readjusting his uh, Widowmine is very smart of him. Might have wanted to do that a little earlier, but Creep is now up into third for Fiend, and now there goes uh, one Queen, but one did manage to get away. Now, all that was a huge tech switch investment from Selian. This is probably one of the hardest spots to be in as a Zerg. What do you do against this? The only thing you can do is just fungal and hope for the best, and Selian taps out. Fiend showing that Pult's uh, three base Marine Widow Mine still works. He can even grab a fourth just because he was. Just because he wanted to, and well, Extraterrestrial Academy falling again.